CataractCoach.com. So why did I choose stop and chop for this technique? It's a monocular patient, and I decided not to perform a standard phaco chop technique. So I'm going to show you the case unedited start to finish. I have sped the video up at one and a half times normal speed, so don't worry about that. A little bit of a tripan blue dye. We're going to stain this lens cap. So the patient has basically one eye. The other eye had some bad angle closure glaucoma issues and is now no light perception. And we are operating on the remaining good eye. Now the patient has deferred and deferred and deferred cataract surgery because of fear. And so now it's not an easy case. It's a dense cataract, it's a small eye. This patient has a shallow AC about 1.7 millimeters. And let's start off by making that main incision here. Using a little tiny diamond, 1.8 millimeter diamond, we're going to slightly enlarge the incision to about 2.2 millimeters. And we, of course, we're barely nicking those limbal vessels to have good long-term sealing. So let's get our rexes done. Now we're looking at the lens capsule, not too much wrinkling. So I'm measuring there, getting an idea of how big I want this rexus. I want to have a good overlap, so we're going to do a 5 millimeter rexus here. And the patient has a very thick lens. The anterior posterior dimension, the lens thickness here is a lot, almost coming on five millimeters thick. Again, shallow anterior chamber. This is going to be a tough case. Now, because there's not a lot of working room, I certainly don't want to prolapse the nucleus out of the bag. The anterior chamber is too shallow. Now, you could, in the case like this with a very shallow anterior chamber, do a little bit of a pars plana anterior vitrectomy, but... Why take the extra risk in a monocular patient? And again, with a very short axial length, you're not always sure exactly where pars plana is or where the, the end of the retina is. So I'm going to start off here going in intentionally making a groove, no chop at all. And here's why. So when I do this groove down the middle for stop and chop, we're debulking the nucleus. And notice how I make the groove, that sculpted groove is about one and a half phaco tips wide. So I'm really getting a nice wide debulking of that central densest part of the nucleus, right? The densest part of the nucleus, that central endonucleus, and we're emulsifying that and debulking it. So now when I split the nucleus, each half is less than 50%, right? Assume the groove took out about 20% of the lens volume. Now each half is only about 40%. Now I can buzz into that half, bring it up, and chop it, and here at the iris plane, take out little pieces at a time. Very controlled removal of the nucleus. You know, a patient like this, my goal is to be very delicate, very deliberate, and to do a very atraumatic surgery. And in a case like this, with a real crowded anterior segment, I'm a little bit crowded. I don't feel like I have a lot of room to work. It's easier for me to do a lot of this debulking of the nucleus when the lens is still in the capsule bag. So here we're taking out the remainder of the first half. The first half nucleus is gone. Now you can see half the nucleus is back in the bag. And again, it's a little bit less than 50% volume because of that big groove we created at the beginning. And now I can chop it and remove it. So yeah, I love FACO chop. I think it's my go-to, my fastball. Used in almost every case. But there are cases like this where you want to be able to do other techniques, like a stop and chop technique. So when I was teaching residents, I would always tell them, Learn all the techniques, and then you can tailor what you're going to deliver to the patient based on that patient's anatomy and the clinical situation. But it's better to have more tools in your toolbox than a fewer. And so I want to be adept and good at performing all different types of nucleofractus techniques. And in this case, I just thought a better option would be to do a stop and chop, and I did it, and the patient had a very nice outcome here. So... Again, now we're going to resolve this patient's issue of narrow angles and um, the risk of angle closure when we do the cataract surgery, right? We're, we're going to replace that thick, almost 5 millimeter thick crystalline lens, the cataract, with a very thin IOL. And that's going to, of course, open the angle of the eye wide up. That's going to resolve the anatomic issue of the narrow angle and really essentially eliminate that risk of angle closure in the future. So here's the viscoelastic going inside the eye. Patient's a high hyperope to begin with. So we're going to put in a monofocal lens and aim for a post-op refractive outcome of essentially Plano. And so you can see a little bit of a sub-incisional cortex. We'll get that out at the end. I don't want to have any extra risk here. So we're going to have to slightly enlarge the incision. Why is that? Well, this patient's getting a 28 and a half diopter lens. And that requires a larger tip there on the injector. So look carefully at the packaging for the IOL, and you'll see that this injector 
has a larger tip. And it says that clearly on the labeling, so you'll know you'll need to slightly increase the IOL, the incision to get the IOL inside the eye. So again, here's the lens. It's 28.5, and it's the bigger nozzle tip. So this is a monofocal, um, aspheric lens with a power of 28 and a half diopters. Now going back in, getting that sub-incisional cortex, that little bit can be removed. Let's go behind the IOL, and the rest of the case is going to be pretty easy. So yeah, bottom line, take-home message here is, you may find out that divide and conquer is your fastball. That's what you like every case. Hey, great. But I still think you should learn how to do stop and chop and, and various combinations of vago chop, whether it's combo chop, vertical chop, horizontal chop, heck, even pre-chop, or even using the femtosecond laser to split the nucleus up into pieces. Whatever it is, I want to learn all the techniques, and then I can decide which is my favorite, and then for each patient, hey, what do I want to do in this clinical situation? So here at the end of the case, you can see IOLs in the capsule bag. Nice looking Rexus overlapping that optic. I'll take it. And now let's seal up the incisions, call it a day. We're going to put a little Triumph Cinelone as well. That's preservative free in order to quell inflammation. If you want to know how to prepare that preservative free, there's a whole section, a video. Go to cataractcoach.com, just type in Triumph Cinelone, and you will find the exact way that I prepare it. And a body going in the eye as well, some preservative free moxifloxacin. And now let's check the incisions. That's just a sponge soaked in some tetracaine. Helps seal the incisions. Also gives a little anesthetic effect. And we're also going to make a small LRI or limbal relaxing incision for some against the rule of stigmatism. And that's it. Thanks for watching.